Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It's Basil here and this is the HTC Vive. I've just had an experience with it. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to film while having the experience itself, but what I can do, I've just come out, I can tell you exactly what happened and exactly what I think, exactly how I think it stacks up against the Gear VR, which I reviewed from Samsung not that long ago. Now, anyone who doesn't know, the Gear VR uses a smartphone. The HTC Vive, on the other hand, plugs directly into a PC. Sure, that means A, you've got wires and B, you've also got a more cumbersome unit You've got, you can't really have the freedom you have when you just have a mobile. But what that also means is a ton more processing power. One of the major limitations with the Gear VR was the fact that it overheated. You could see pixels because the screen was high res, but not as high res as it needed to be. And on top of that, it just couldn't handle a really beautiful, immersive 3D games and 3D experiences that I got to experience with the Vive. The Vive doesn't feel perfect just yet, but it's as close as I have seen to perfect in a virtual reality headset. I'll run you through the experiences now, and the first one was this hexagonal world. I had these two controllers in my hand, and I could walk around a room freely. There were wires, but there was someone moving the wires out of the way, so it really did feel instantly like I was dropped into somewhere else. MWC this year has been bonkers, so it was a breath of fresh air from the crazy, crazy convention center. Obviously I couldn't see myself, so I didn't realize how special I looked with this thing on. So all I got to do was walk around this crazy white futuristic hexagonal world and relax. It was actually quite blissful, quite peaceful. As far as the eyepiece goes, you can make out pixels. You've got a load of sensors around you. The room has sensors as well, and it figures out where you are and what you're looking at. Uh, and like I said, the screen isn't completely perfect. It wasn't, it was a sharpest of experience, but like I said, you could still make out pixels. And if you looked hard enough, it broke the experience ever so slightly. Still, after the hexagonal world, I moved on to a ship. It was the deck of a pirate ship that had been sunk. I could walk around, I could see fish, I could interact with fish, I could push them out of the way, and then a massive, massive blue whale swam by, and it really was just like I could walk right into it. I felt like Ariel in The Little Mermaid, except I'm a man. Anyway, ultimately, probably the best VR experience I've ever had in that single pirate ship. Um, but sadly, it didn't last forever. I was taken off that pirate ship and I was dropped into a kitchen. In this kitchen, I could actually make stuff. I could interact with food objects. And, and that instantly brought the realization that virtual reality can be used in an educational way so, so effectively. But while I thought that to a degree with a Gear VR, it really really, really has hit home when you've got these two controllers that you can actually interact with. So I could pick up objects, I could pick up tomatoes. It kind of taught me how to make tomato soup. I put the mushrooms in there, then it fried egg and stuff like that. So little things like that just really hit home something that you can read and you can understand that virtual reality can be used for educational purposes. After that, I was taken to an almost Final Fantasy type game. The imagery of it was like Final Fantasy IX. It was kind of like on a Warhammer board game type thing. And I could get really, really close up to these miniature figures that were fighting. And it really did look like a war from Final Fantasy VII and I, or VIII. And I was just placed into it. And it, yeah, immersive, guns firing. If I had the opportunity to control any of those, it would have just made everything that bit more real, that bit more engaging and amazing. And with Valve behind the uh, HTC Vive, um, I really, really don't think there's any doubt that awesome gaming experiences are going to follow. I'm not going to run through all the gaming experiences I had after that, but one of them that really did stand out was Portal. I got to machine a robot, and this robot kind of detached, and I could fix elements of it. And like you see how I'm moving around now. Having the mask kind of gives you the confidence to just move around. Other reporters have said that it made them feel nauseous. I didn't feel that nauseous. I just really wanted to move around and explore this virtual world. When you reach an extremity that you can't walk beyond, this grid system comes up and you just can't walk anymore. But ultimately what you're left with is this engineering experience. And then it taught me beyond just like cooking shows and stuff like that and cooking education, it could really like medicine, the engineering itself, architecture, the possibilities really are endless so beyond gaming and I am a gamer don't get me wrong it's just such a rich rich uh, experience to be involved in 
finally there was this drawing experience and what it made me end up doing I tried to like mind map on a wall I use Samsung Galaxy note devices because I love to draw I love to sketch my st study it's just got massive massive mind maps on the wall but they take up so much room to have that freedom but here I was literally writing on a wall and what I was left with was in reality no wall space taken up nothing so this virtual reality world the implications for business virtual meetings the implications across all forms of education uh, right through to having a like you know a virtual experience where you see a loved one or something like that just on this more immersive screen is awesome you do still see a black border now uh, HTC said you've got this room view where you don't see any border the only border really comes in in the form of the IP so as far as the screen goes all your visual field is taken up by that if they could bring it even closer to your eyes so then that would minimize that but like I said the best virtual reality experience that I have ever had it'll be interesting to see when this thing launches exactly do you know what actually oh, don't need this anymore it'll be interesting to see when it launches exactly how much it's going to cost and what kind of hardware you're going to need to power it along um, but until that day thank you HTC for having me try out the HTC Vive hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have clicked that like button and if you've got any questions about it just fire them in the comments section below thanks for watching DTECT get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus search O2 Business for more